Good day students, welcome to mathgodserve.com. In this clip, we're going to be going over problems 1 to 10 of the semester 1 final exam practice questions for Algebra 2 honors. Let's take a look at question number 1. It reads, a student has learned that test scores in math are determined by this quadratic function. S of t equals the quantity t negative the quantity t minus 6 square plus 99. In the function, s is the score and t is the number of hours that a student spends on homework each week. A part question. How many hours must a student spend on homework to achieve maximum score? Okay, so one thing you want to note is um, that we have a downward opening uh, parabola in this um, situation. How do we know that the parabola opens downwards? Well, we have a negative sign associated with the A value. Okay. Anytime you have a negative, you know that your parabola opens downwards. And if you have a positive A value, then your parabola opens upwards. Okay. Now, um, if you have a downward opening parabola, where is your maximum going to be? Let's write down that point. The maximum of a downward opening um, opening parabola as is with the case that we're dealing with in this problem the maximum occurs at the vertex okay the vertex which is h comma k if you have the parabola in vertex form as it is the case here okay all right, let's take a look at the first question. It says, how many hours must a student spend on homework to achieve a maximum score? So um, the amount of hours is a unit of time, okay? So hours for maximum score, let's call it T maximum, okay? The input value that will yield the highest outputs. We call that T max. In this function, our independent variable is t, and our dependent variable, or the output function, the score is s. Okay, so t max is basically the x coordinate of the vertex. Okay, so remember we said that the maximum occurs at the vertex, right? So the x coordinate of the vertex represents the time that the function would generate the maximum score and the y coordinate is the maximum score. Now let's go ahead and um, determine what our vertex is in this problem. So let's go ahead and write down the vertex form of a, of a problem. So it's going to be y equals a for the opening times a x minus h square plus k. Now if we place the function in this problem underneath this um, general form of a quadratic function in vertex form, we'll have s of t equals negative t minus 6 quantity square plus 99. So what does this tell us? Well, it tells us what the vertex is. Remember, your vertex is hk, okay? So the vertex hk is given by um, h, you can clearly see, is 6 and k is 99. So the vertex is 6, 99. This tells us that the x coordinate of the vertex is 6 and the y coordinate of the vertex is 99. T max, the, the amount of hours that a student must study to get the maximum score, 
is the x coordinate of the vertex as indicated earlier, and that is 6 hours. Okay, so let's go ahead and write down what this result means. The result we just found means that the student, um, no, let's call it a student. Okay, so a student must study for How long for six hours to get the maximum score? So that's the answer for um, problem 1A. Now let's take a look at the B part. The B part asks for what the maximum score is. Okay, so the maximum score is the output of the vertex. The maximum score, let's call it S max, is basically the Y coordinate of the vertex. So if we take a look at this, um, the results we got in problem one, we know what the Y coordinate of the vertex is, which is um, 99. Okay, so since the y coordinate of the vertex is 99, the maximum score is 99. That's um, the maximum score you can earn if you study for six hours using the function that we have. Question 1c. Question 1c reads based on the function, what will be the score if a student does no homework? So if a student does no homework, how much time did they spend doing homework? They spent zero hours, okay? So let's write that down. Um, if a student spends no time on homework, The amount of time spent on the homework T is going to be equal to zero hours, okay? So the function for this problem S of T is equal to negative T minus six quantity square plus 99. So um, all we simply have to do to compute the score when T is equal to zero is evaluate this function at T equals zero. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We're going to have negative instead of t, we'll have zero. So what we're computing here is simply the output when the input is zero. Okay, all right, so carry out the substitution. Now we'll just simply use order of operations. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally to simplify this resulting expression. So let's deal with the parentheses first. So we have minus negative 0 minus 6 is negative 6 square plus 99. Negative 6 square is going to give us 36. But there was a negative on the outside before, so that stays plus 99. Okay. So if we calculate negative 36 plus 99, we will have the answer of 63. Okay, so um, let's write down what the answer means. A student um, will get a score of 63 for doing, for doing no homework. Okay, so that's the answer for question number 1C. All right, let's take a look at question number 2. It reads, show that negative 3 plus i is a root of x squared plus 6x plus 10 equals 0. Okay, so point to note. Um, concerning a value being 
a root of a polynomial equation. So note if let's say r if r is a root of some polynomial equation p of x equals 0 then what does that mean? Then um, let's just erase that then the function evaluated at that root r is going to give us an output of 0. Okay, that's what it means for a particular numerical value to be the root of a polynomial equation. Okay, so let's apply this um, fact to this problem here. So if r, which is negative 3 plus i, if negative 3 plus i is a root of this polynomial equation x squared plus 6x plus 10 equals 0, then guess what? Then this polynomial function x squared plus 6x plus 10 will be equal 0 when negative 3 plus i is substituted for x. Okay? When it's substituted for x, what we're looking at is p of negative 3 plus i. So let's go ahead and carry out the substitution and see if we get 0. If we get 0, then we have accomplished our goal. So um, we have the polynomial equation x squared plus 6x plus 10 equals 0. Now, for all the x's, I will substitute this root, okay? So we are testing the root out to verify that it is, in fact, um, a root of the polynomial equation, okay? So 6 times negative 3 plus i <coughs> plus 10 equals 0. All right, so the next step here is to simplify this completely and see if we end up with a value of 0. If we do, then we've showed that negative 3 plus i is a root of this polynomial equation. Okay, negative 3 plus i square basically means that you multiply negative 3 plus i by itself. And then here you distribute 6 across negative 3 plus i. That yields negative 18 plus 6i plus 10 equals 0. Now, um, we'll distribute these two quantities to each other. We can fold them out since we're multiplying two um, quantities with two terms. So first, outer, inner, last will suffice here. So you go first, outer, inner, last. Okay, so we have negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. Negative 3 times i is negative 3i. i times negative 3 is negative 3i again. And then um, positive i times positive i is positive i square. Okay, now we can carry out the combination of two like terms here, namely negative 18 plus 10. If we combine those two, we will get negative 8. All right, so just bring down 6i. Negative 18 plus 10 is negative 8 equals 0. Now, let's see what we can do here. Oh, we can combine these two like terms in the middle here. So we have 9 minus 6i. Now, you want to remember that um, if you have i raised to a power that's greater than 1, it must be simplified. Okay, i squared is negative 1. So we have to simplify that here. So we replace i squared with um, plus negative 1. Okay. And then plus 6i minus 8 equals 0. Now let's see if we can carry out further simplification here. Um, oh, negative 6i plus 6i opposites. So they combine to yield 
0. And then we have 9 minus 1 minus 8. Is it equal to 0? 9, negative 1 minus 8 is 9, right? So 9 minus 9, is it equal to 0? It certainly is. Now, since we got um, a result of 0 when we evaluated this function at negative 3 plus i, that automatically means that it is in fact a root of the polynomial equation. So let's go ahead and write it down. Since the polynomial evaluated at negative 3 plus i gave us an output of 0, then um, negative 3 plus i is a root of, of the equation, which is x squared plus 6x plus 10 equals 0. All right, let's look at question 3. It says solve x squared plus 25 equals 0 over the set of complex numbers. Okay, so let's go ahead and solve that. But as indicated in the previous problem, you want to remember that um, the square root of negative 1 is equal to i. As a result of this, i square is negative 1 because when you square both sides, you have i square on the right and negative 1 on the left. With that in mind, let's go ahead and solve the equation x squared plus 25 equals 0. We'll subtract 25 from both sides. That yields x squared equals negative 25. Now to get x isolated, we're going to apply the inverse of the square function to both sides, which is the root function, the square root function. Uh, and that isolates x for us, but anytime you take um, the root of a square, you always have to introduce plus or minus. Now this minus underneath the square root comes out as an i, and the square root of 25, which is a perfect square, is 5. So x, if we want to make this look pretty, is plus or minus 5i. Answer to question number 3 is option letter C. All right, let's take a look at question number 4. It reads, which of the following quadratic equation has no real roots? Okay, so in this problem, we are going to be using the discriminant to classify the roots of these quadratic equations. We do not have to solve them, okay? That's the power of the discriminant is that you can determine um, the roots, the nature of the roots of a quadratic without solving it completely. Now we're looking for a scenario where we have no real roots, so I'd like you to recollect the following fact. Remember that a quadratic in standard form, what does the standard form mean? We are talking about ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero form. Please put it in this form before you start calculating your discriminant. So a quadratic in this form has no real roots when the discriminant the discriminant is a radical or the radicand of your quadratic formula okay when a discriminant written as triangle or is b squared minus 4ac whenever the discriminant is less than 0 okay if it is negative. If your discriminant is negative, what happens is that when you're um, simplifying the resulting expression, when you substitute ABC into the quadratic formula, the radical component is going to be negative and you end up with an imaginary number which yields a non-real result. Okay, so that's what we're looking for which of these will give us a negative discriminant. So what we're going to do is uh, just determine what the discriminants are for each option and then whichever one is negative that will be our answer. Let's start with option A. 
2x squared minus 7x minus 9 equals 0. This is already in standard form, which is excellent. So we can easily determine that a is 2, b is negative 7, and c is negative 9. Now with that fact, we can calculate our discriminant, b squared minus 4ac. So if we carry out the substitution, b squared is negative 7 squared minus 4, a is 2, c is negative 9. If we simplify this, uh, we'll have 7 squared is 49 minus 4ac. Um, 4 times 2 is 8. 8 times 9 is 72. And then we have a minus and a minus, so this becomes a plus, plus 72. And when we combine these two, we get 121. Okay? Now, what do we know about 121? 121 is positive and it's also a square. If it's a square or not, tells us something about the roots too. So since it is positive and a square, this tells us that this quadratic equation right here has two real rational roots two real rational roots. We're looking for the roots that are not real. So this is a fail right here. This doesn't work. Take out option A. So we're going to move on to the next candidate, option B. Option B is 2x squared equals 7x. This is not in standard form, so we have to do some work here. So if we want to put this in standard form, We'll simply subtract 7x from both sides, and that gives us 2x squared minus 7x, and then for the C component, plus 0 equals 0. Now it is in standard form, and we can determine our values for A, which is 2B, negative 7, and C, which is 0. Now let's look for the discriminant. Discriminant is b squared minus 4ac. Okay, if we carry out the substitution, we'll have b squared negative 7. Please use parentheses when you're substituting a negative number so you don't mess up the signs. Okay, so negative 7 squared minus 7 times, oh, wait a minute. Uh, so that's b squared minus 4ac, so b squared minus 4a is 2, c is 0. So we have negative 7 times negative 7 minus times minus is plus 49. 4 times 2 is 8 times 0 is 0, 49 minus 0, which is 49. So this discriminant is greater than 0 and is also a square again. So what does that tell us about the roots of this quadratic equation in B? It tells us that, just like option A, we have two real rational roots. Is that what we're looking for? No. We're looking for non-real roots, so option B is a fail also. Now let's move on to option letter C. For option C, we have the quadratic equation 2x squared plus 7x minus 9 equals 0. This is nice because the quadratic is already in standard form. We do not have to carry out any algebraic manipulations here. Since it is already in standard form, we just have to determine what um, a, B, and C are. All right, so let's um, go ahead and specify what those values are. A is 2, B is 7, and C is negative 9. Now we can compute our discriminant, B squared minus 4AC. So if we substitute, we're going to get B squared 
minus 4a, which is 2, and c, which is negative 9. Alrighty, so let's simplify this using the order of operations. 7 squared is 49 minus ac, 4ac. 4 times 2 is 8 times negative 9 is negative 72. We have a minus here. We already did that up here, so plus 72. When you combine these two, you get 121 again, which is greater than 0, and a perfect square because 11 times 11 is 121. So what does this tell us about the root of this quadratic equation? We have two real roots because it's positive, and it's the irrational because we have um, a square. Okay, so two real rational roots, that's not what we're looking for. We're looking for um, non-real roots. Okay, now let's take a look at the last one. By way of elimination, our answer should be option D because that's the only option we haven't tested. And the other three are all have real roots. Okay, so for option three, we have 2x squared plus 7x plus 9. This is uh, already in standard form, which is excellent. So a is 2, b is 7, and c is positive 9. What is our discriminant here? b squared minus 4ac. Our discriminant is going to be positive 7 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is 9. 7 squared is 49, minus 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 9 is 72, minus 72, we get negative 23 as our difference. Now since we have a negative discriminant, what does that tell us? Since the discriminant is negative, it tells us that we have two imaginary roots, two imaginary roots. What does it mean for the roots to be imaginary? That means that they are not real. This is exactly what we're looking for. So answer to number uh, four is option letter D. All right, let's take a look at question five. It reads, according to the fundamental theorem of algebra, how many roots does the following equation have? So we have um, 6x squared plus 4 equals 11x. So something that I would like you to note is that um, according to the uh, to the fundamental theorem of algebra, let's call it FTA, the number of roots is basically equal to the degree of the polynomial. Okay, that's the maximum maximum number of roots that you can have. Okay, now uh, let's take a look at this problem here, 6x squared plus 4 equals 11x. Let's put it in standard form, okay? So we just subtract 11x from both sides. And then we will have 6x squared minus 11x plus 4 equals 0. Now question, what is the degree of this polynomial equation? What's the degree of this quadratic? The degree is the highest exponent, okay? The highest exponent is 2 here because the degree of this term is 2, the degree of this term is 1, and the degree of this constant is 0. So the degree of all quadratics is 2. So degree equals 2. So if the degree is 2, how many roots are we going to have using the fundamental theorem of algebra? The number of roots is equal to the degree, right? So the number of roots is also going to be equal to 2 and the answer to number 5 is option letter A.